Welcome to the Taste of Life channel. Today signifies the encounter between Jesus and the Antichrist. However, who exactly is the Antichrist? In biblical prophecy, it was predicted that during the end times, a person would rise to power and deceive many while opposing God. This individual would employ deceit to gain authority and lead people astray, elevating themselves above anything that is considered divine or deserving of worship. In fact, they would even claim to be God, 2 Thessalonians 2.4. The term Antichrist originates from the Greek word Antichrists, where anti means against or in place of, and Christos means Christ. Essentially, the Antichrist represents someone or something that opposes or acts as a substitute for Christ. This concept finds its roots in the Bible, particularly in the epistles of John. The books of 1 John and 2 John explicitly mention the term Antichrist. It is stated that it is the last hour and that many Antichrists have already appeared. Indicating the imminent arrival of the Antichrist, 1 John 2.18 The Antichrist will begin as a regional leader and eventually ascend to become a global leader, a tyrannical and glorified worldwide dictator who even asserts to be a deity. In the book of Revelation, the Antichrist is symbolically portrayed as a beast emerging from the sea, representing the Gentile nations mentioned in the Bible. The Antichrist is described as having seven heads and ten horns, symbolizing their association with and influence from Satan. According to Revelation 13, the Antichrist will suffer a fatal wound around the midpoint of the tribulation, but Satan will miraculously heal them. This figure of lawlessness is depicted as someone who opposes God, establishes themselves in God's temple, and proclaims to be God. These characteristics align with the broader notion of an Antichrist figure, someone who opposes and endeavors to replace Christ. The meeting between the Antichrist and Jesus is described in Revelation 16, which recounts the pouring out of vials filled with God's wrath upon the Antichristian Empire and everything connected to it. These judgments are unleashed upon the earth, the sea, the rivers, and the fountains of water. Despite the devastating consequences of these plagues, people persist in speaking ill of God rather than praising Him. God's wrath purges the earth of evil. Both the sixth bowl and the sixth trumpet judgments are linked to the Euphrates River and focus on military forces influenced by demonic activity. The encounter commences with the drying up of the Euphrates River, Revelation 16.12. Some interpret this event literally, as it is believed to be the location where the Turkish power and empire originated in ancient times. The Romans regarded the Euphrates River as a secure barrier against potential invasions from eastern empires. During that particular time, the Euphrates River had a length of approximately 1,800 miles, 2,900 kilometers, and a width ranging from 300 to 1,200 yards, 275 to 1. 100 meters. However, if the Euphrates River were to dry up and transform into a pathway, it would provide a convenient route for large armies from the east, including nations like China, India, and Japan, to easily move westward. Speculation arises about the intentions of these eastern armies as they proceed in that direction. Some believe their purpose is to annihilate Israel, while others think it is to rebel against the Antichrist, a global leader based in Europe. Ultimately, these armies will find themselves in conflict with God and His Messiah. As part of God's implementation of the Sixth Bowl Judgment, He is directing history towards the Battle of Armageddon. The consequence of this judgment is the drying up of the river, which deprives the city of its sources of wealth, provisions, and other necessities. In Revelation 16, 13, 14, three repulsive spirits resembling frogs emerge from the mouths of the dragon, Satan the beast, the Antichrist dictator, and a false prophet. These spirits are actually demons who perform miraculous signs. They go out to the kings of the entire inhabited earth, gathering them for the war known as the Great Day of God Almighty. Demons utilize signs and wonders as instruments of deception. The false prophet, referred to as the second beast in Revelation 13, plays a significant role in uniting the nations for this battle. It is important to note that this is not a conflict between one nation and another, but rather a war where God is contending against the nations of the world. The prophecy mentions three major conflicts, and this battle is one of them. In this context, we encounter the unholy trinity. 
Satan often imitates or counterfeits the things of God to present himself as God. The unholy trinity, vividly described in Revelation 12 and 13, serves as a prime example. While the holy trinity consists of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the unholy trinity consists of Satan, the Antichrist as the second member and son, and the false prophet. The false prophet directs people's worship and praise towards the Antichrist, mirroring the role of the Holy Spirit in directing worship towards Christ. While the Holy Trinity embodies infinite truth, love, and goodness, the unholy trinity represents the exact opposite, deception, hatred, and pure evil. Although different Bible passages depict Satan in various forms, such as a serpent or an angel of light, in Revelation, he is described as a great red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns on his heads. In Revelation 12, 3, the color red symbolizes the fierce nature of the great red dragon. The Antichrist, also referred to as the Beast, is described in Revelation 13 and Daniel 7 as the second member of the unholy trinity. While the term Antichrist is explicitly mentioned only four times in the Bible, this figure is known by various other names. He is depicted as the bringer of destruction, the lawless one, the evil man, the beast, a fierce king, a master of intrigue, a despicable man, and a worthless shepherd. When he emerges, people will be attracted to him and willingly follow his commands. The unholy trinity is completed by the false prophet, as portrayed in Revelation 13 11, 18. Jesus specifically cautioned believers to be wary of false prophets, who may appear innocent but can cause great harm. The false prophet possesses the ability to perform impressive signs and wonders, including calling down fire from heaven. They establish an image of the Antichrist to be worshipped, demand universal adoration of the image, and execute those who refuse. Additionally, the false prophet enforces a permanent mark on everyone as a sign of unwavering loyalty to the Antichrist, rejecting God. Only those with the mark are allowed to engage in economic transactions, while accepting the mark results in eternal death. By accepting the mark, individuals not only acknowledge an economic system but also a worship system that rejects Jesus Christ. The number of the beast, 666, is unveiled in Revelation 13.8. In a final desperate attempt to regain power, the great dragon Satan summons his forces and spirits for a final assault. The three unclean spirits mentioned are the demons who aid Satan, the beast, and the false prophet by performing miracles. They persuade Eastern kings, armies, and rulers from around the world to gather and engage in battle against the second coming of Christ. The outcome of this battle, known as the Great Day of God Almighty, is evident. It is the victory of God, not of humanity, the Antichrist, or the dragon. In the portrayal of the imminent battle, a call to action emerges, urging preparedness for Jesus' victory. Throughout the Bible, demons are engaged in various activities, such as causing illness, tempting individuals towards immorality, and spreading false teachings. Despite their association with evil, God will employ demons during the end times to accomplish His plan. The term Armageddon, derived from the Hebrew word Har Megiddo, signifies the gathering of world leaders and armies at a historically significant conflict zone. In the book of Revelation, Armageddon is depicted as the location of a monumental battle. The title Revelation of Jesus Christ indicates that the book unveils what was previously concealed, fully revealing Jesus Christ and his prophetic plan, making it a fitting conclusion to the New Testament. The primary focus of the book of Revelation is to unveil the person and prophetic plan of Jesus Christ, serving various purposes, including providing encouragement to believers to endure persecution and suffering, it assures them of Christ's ultimate triumph over the world and the devil. On a significant day marking the beginning of the end of the Antichrist's reign, extraordinary signs and wonders will manifest in the sky. The heavens will seemingly open, and light will penetrate the darkness, as described in Matthew. Ultimately, the Antichrist will attempt to wage war against Jesus, as mentioned in Psalm 2, where nations rebel against God. However, God mocks their rebellion and ridicules them, declaring his anointed king in Zion. The book of Revelation vividly depicts the defeat of the beast Antichrist and the false prophet who are cast into a lake of fire. 
This signifies the culmination of the Antichrist's rule, coinciding with Jesus' return. It signifies not only an end but also a new beginning, offering hope and redemption to humanity. The defeat of the Antichrist demonstrates the enduring power of faith and the victory of God's truth over darkness. Following the Antichrist's downfall, the devil is also thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, as stated in Revelation 2010. After this momentous day, Jesus establishes a millennial kingdom on earth, lasting for one zero years, during which he rules with justice and peace. This era is commonly referred to as the millennium, and believers live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. After the conclusion of the final judgment, which takes place following the millennium, Satan, who had been bound for a thousand years, will be temporarily released and subsequently defeated. As a result, the ultimate judgment will occur, where all of humanity will face judgment. In this judgment, both the ordinary and the prominent will stand before God, and the books, including the Book of Life, will be opened. Each individual will be judged based on their deeds, as recorded in the books. Leaders who prioritize the well-being of others strive for fairness, not only within their organizations, but also in society as a whole. We can see Jesus as the supreme leader who administers justice on earth. He is driven to ensure justice for everyone. Are you taking any steps to make a positive impact on the world in terms of promoting justice? The significance of the book of Revelation is highlighted in this narrative. Prior to his death, Jesus prophesied that the Holy Spirit would reveal future events to his apostles. John 16, 13. This prophecy was partially fulfilled through the teachings of Paul and Peter, but it was most completely fulfilled through the revelation given to the Apostle John while he was on the island of Patmos. The book of Revelation contains over 40 instances of the phrase, and I saw, and the statement I was in the Spirit is frequently used throughout the book. John reports being instructed to record what he saw a total of 12 times. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this remarkable day as the chapter of the Antichrist comes to a close, we turn our hearts to you, seeking understanding and comfort. You have always been our refuge and strength. Guide us through these times of change. We pray for those who have been led astray, that they may discover the true light and love of your word. May the deceptions of the enemy be exposed, and may truth and righteousness prevail. For the many who have lived in fear and uncertainty, we ask for peace. Let this day mark a new beginning of hope, faith, and love for all your children. Lord, in the midst of chaos, you remain our anchor. Help us always to rely on your promises, remembering that evil will never have the final say. Renew our spirits and let your love shine brightly in the days to come. Thank you very much for your attentive watching. May God bless you.